and congratulations. Russ Gibbs jumping up and down. My guest today is a uh, person who wants to be on the State Board of Education. And God knows we need people in education that have some brains. We're going to find out about this lady. Her name is Mary Ruart. She's running for the State Board of Education seat. And she's a civil libertarian. Civil libertarian? A libertarian. A libertarian. And uh, we'll be talking to Mary in just a minute. Uh, I voted for my first libertarian in the last election because I get so fed up with the Republicans and the Democrats, I want to do you know what. But anyway, we'll be talking with Mary in a minute. You in the hardware stores? I mean, if you are, I would like to recommend one. Hans's Ace's Hardware Store down on West Warren in Dearborn, and that's just off of Greenfield. And if you run around Dearborn Heights, it's also on West Warren. So they got two stores. Great sale on paint right now. So check it out. If your wife has decided that you should go out and paint the house, paint the garage, Hans's Ace's Hardware Store. Do it. I'll be back in a minute. We'll be talking about a subject I know a lot about, education. Don't go away. A performance you won't forget. Ford Pro GT. The idea is that I think some of our educators in town, some of the educrats, the bureaucrats, the administrators ought to listen to if they can listen to anything, because they're always preaching to us what they think we should do for education. Maybe they ought to listen to some of the citizens. So here's your chance. Here's your chance, folks. Those of you that are making big bucks in education, why don't you listen? Just listen. You have to agree. I don't expect you to agree, but I expect you to listen. After all, you're for dem democracy. You know, give us a listen. See what the lady has to say. We'll be talking with her in just a minute. You want to know what I'm jumping up and down about? Nothing. Education. And we're going to be talking about that in just a minute, so that's the most important thing that we should be jumping up and down about. All the networks have had special shows on education in the last two or three weeks. Insight has a marvelous article, September 24th, 1990, on education. I'm even pleased to say that Teacher Magazine had an article on electronic education and the new literacy. And uh, they even were kind enough to mention the Dearborn Public Schools and the video program. I clean up in that program. I usually uh, move the chairs around in that program. So uh, it, it was kind of sort of pleasant to read about our program over there. Anyway, education is in the news. We're going to be talking about a lady who wants to be a State Board of Education member. I don't even think she's a teacher, so I don't know what she's running around thinking she should be on the State Board. Maybe I'm just kidding. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Chamberton, serving French-American cuisine at its finest. Whether you're in the mood for shrimp Helene, Greek-style rack of lamb, or fresh Norwegian salmon, it's the Chamber. Are you a doctor? I have a PhD in biophysics, yes. In biophysics? Mm -hmm. What's biophysics? Well, it's a combination of uh, bi biology and physics. It's okay. the application of physical principles to biology to better understand how the cells work, how we work. Uh, well, we're reading a lot about cellular therapy and everything today and implantation of genes. Do you work along those lines? Uh, not exactly. What I do is I'm trying to look at a way to take the clone gene products, which are usually proteins, right. and find ways that we can use them as drug therapy. Because many of these uh, proteins are digested when we take them orally, yes, right. and so they don't get into the bloodstream. They aren't effective. And I'm trying to find ways to... How you carry little torpedoes. Exactly. <laughs> and cocktails, and you get them into the place where they're needed into the exactly, body. Exactly, exactly. Oh, that sounds interesting. Why would a, a person like Mary J. Ruart, born and raised in the Detroit area, and now a senior research science at Upjohn Company in Kalamazoo, want to run for the State Board of Education? What brought that all about? Well, I am very concerned about the educational system in our country. I mean, the SAT. You are? Yes, that's right. So am I. I've taught for 30 years, and exactly. it's in a disgraceful shape. Exactly, exactly. And I got part of the problem solved. 
The problem is us. We met the enemy and it's us. Yes, I agree entirely. Uh, it's the parents, the teachers, the administrators, and the students. Frankly, mm -hmm. we're all responsible for what has become a bad joke in our society. We spend more money on education than we've ever spent. Mm -hmm. That's right. And look at the products we're turning out. Exactly. Who's getting whom? Exactly. We've let You want to know anything else? <laughs> Go ahead. You're running for state uh, board. I want to shut uh, up for a while. Well, you're, you're exactly right. We've, uh, we're responsible for letting the control go from the parents and teachers who should really know more about education, and we've given it to the bureaucrats and administrators, uh, people like the State Board of Education that certifies teachers. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, I was an assistant professor of surgery at St. Louis University Medical School. Of course, I do have a Ph.D. in biophysics, but I would not be allowed to teach high school science classes. Oh, I know. And it's crazy. So. Um, one of the reasons I'm running for state board is so that we can have more choice in the system, so that people who are qualified to teach can teach, that parents who want to put their children in schools that specialize in certain areas can do that. We've lost control about how our children learn. We don't have up-to-date technology in the schools, even though, as you're well aware, I'm sure many studies show that's the best. We don't have control about We don't even understand the new literacy, which is the understanding that kids are reading, but they're reading television sets. Mm -hmm. You know, like exactly. we used to exactly. read uh, books, they're reading television sets. In fact, the Free Press and the News, I called both of them and I got them interested in the story because we have some national organizations of educators who are saying, look, instead of saying boo-boo on television, and there's a lot of junk on television, just as mm -hmm. there's a lot of junk in the printed, written word, but I like to remind everybody that in ancient Greece that when the parents were first uh, heard that their kids were being taught to read and write up in the academy, they demanded their money back. You know why? Because an ancient Greek scholar had it all in his head. Writing was a, thought to be a form of cheating. Did you know that? Hmm, no, I didn't. Okay. It's very interesting. So they looked down. And today we hold the printed word as sacrosanct. We're getting into icons in education. You use a computer and you have icons today, little, mm -hmm. little picture graphs. Mm -hmm. You go to an international airport, they don't spell men and women on a john anymore. There's a little picture of a little man and a little, mm -hmm. a little girl. And away you go into wherever you belong. And the bottom line is that we don't even address this in most education things. We're still harping. Kids can't read today. What is reading? Do you know what reading is? Writing. Writing is taking the spoken word. We learn 90% of what we learn with the spoken word, by the way, not with the printed word. And when I'm writing on here, alphabet is a form of sound or recording sound. I'm recording it manually on a piece of paper. Now, if I can take a video camera and record you, as we're doing now, mm -hmm. all the sound, the nuances of your expressions, uh, my taking over the conversation, and all this is made aware of, okay, and then we play it back, you're reading just as surely if you were reading a written review mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. except it's much more accurate. So where do we get off that television, that kids that are watching television aren't literate? Oh, well, they learn very well from television. Exactly. If you talk to any child, they can tell you all of the jingles of the commercials. The advertisers know exactly how to teach, but we don't use that in our schools yeah, oh, I today. I know. We're afraid of it. That's right, and, and I think what we need to do is to open up our system so that there can be schools that will utilize those techniques and, and that parents can have the choice to send their children to those schools. Today, just, they don't have that choice. No, and just for the record, I'm not saying you throw away reading and writing in the old-fashioned sense of the printed word, I, my God, I, I would think you'd be foolish. Mm -hmm. That's like throwing away your culture, your history. Exactly. So I'm not down on that at all. I want kids to read and write the printed word. But I also think we ought to come into the future and take a look at how information is disseminated. You work for Upjohn. I'll mm -hmm. bet they have television department at Upjohn. I'll bet they make videos that mm -hmm. you show one another. I'll bet they have teleconferencing. Mm -hmm. Okay, picture phones are on the horizon. Well, they have them in the corporations now. They're going to be private in a few years. All of these things, and we in education are still sitting around letting administrators, people who have been brainwashed up in uh, education colleges, determine how we should teach children. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't feel good at all about that. That's why I'm running for State Board of Education. I feel that we need people who are going to get back to what made the country great, freedom of choice. Yeah. Back in the 1800s... You're for the vouchers. I'm for the vouchers as a good first step, but I'd like to see education uh, much freer than it was today. You know, back in the early 1800s, uh, there was no mandatory education. Parents could send their children to a school or they could teach them at home 
or they could uh, work with them a while, um, have them hold a job, go back to school. There was a lot of flexibility, and the tutors of the time were very careful to teach the children what it was they wanted to learn and what the parents wanted them to learn, not this um, uh, subject matter that depends on the child's age, not putting them in school nine months a year from eight to three. I mean, these some people don't learn best that way. And exactly. Cer and certainly our education hasn't changed much since then. I mean, the teachers still come in. They still go up to the blackboard and regurgitate what was in the books the children read right. the night before. Um, and if we had a much freer system, we would have all these technological innovations. And the in fact, teachers would be teaching some of the kids. That's right. And I had a kid, uh, uh, Andy Fratkin. Well, he's a ninth grader. He taught me how to work the computer. Mm -hmm. And a ninth grader teach me how to work a computer. And he did a marvelous job. Mm -hmm. That's right. Excellent. That's right. And you know, when we had a free system back in the 1800s, when they surveyed in Boston, 1817, to find out how many children were in school, they found that 90% of the children were in some type of school, even though there was no mandatory requirement. We'd be thrilled today if we could get 90% of our kids to be in school. And I think what this shows is that when you have a system where parents and children can choose, there's much more motivation. The children are learning what they want to learn. You know yourself, you, you can't teach a child something that they don't want to learn. They're no. going to sit there and disrupt your class, and the other kids that want to learn aren't going Amen. to be able to learn. Amen, sister. You're right on there. <laughs> you just can't force education down someone's throat. You got my vote. <laughs> you can go home now. I'm going to vote for you. Uh, no, because that's what we need. Mm -hmm. We need somebody to shake up. Instead of saying these platitudes, that we're going to educate your kids and we know best. Mm -hmm. They don't know best. That's exactly. the bottom line. That's the scam. That's the big ripoff of our society today that many of these people running around with PhDs, no offense, PhDs in education are acting as they're the experts and we're sitting there, well, gee, they got a PhD and they must know better than I how to educate my kid. That's, that's a lie. It mm -hmm. doesn't happen. They're giving it to you. It's piled high. You could grow it, you know, put it on the flowers. It'll make them grow big. Right, why well, don't we do something about it, though? Well, that's what we need to do, and that's why the Libertarian Party is getting very active in education, because, of course, if children aren't educated, that's our future. We don't have a future if we don't have, you know, kids that are educated, that know what history was, that know how things go. A lot of people think we have public education today because um, children didn't go to school. And, of course, as, as I mentioned before, that survey in Boston shows that just isn't true. In fact, the motivation seems to be more that with a new wave of immigration coming in, the people who were already here wanted to Americanize the immigrants. They sure. saw this was a way to push them into it. And the immigrants resisted. They were dirt poor, but they started things like their Catholic parochial schools right. and things because they wanted their children. To have their silk, the culture. That's which right. Which is natural. That's right. And to have, I mean, they had just fled from all this aggression of other governments, and they weren't about to let their kids be enrolled in a school where it was forced down their throat again. Well, I mean, we they force knew everything of down kids today. I had a, a, a tradesman in the Dearborn Public Schools come in. Now, this man probably, if he made it through high school, fine, but he's a fine tradesman. But he was sitting there, and we, we were sitting on the steps talking. He said, you know, the problem of education is I can hardly wait to leave the, this uh, school system. He's an employee of the school system, and he said... Uh, I can hardly wait to leave. He said, you know the problem with this whole system here in Dearborn? He said, they still want to treat kids like Henry Ford made his first automobiles. That uh, everyone would be black, everyone would be the same way. And he said, today we have all this equipment and we could treat kids individually. Mm -hmm. And he said, for all the talk, he said, I get around to all the schools. It's pretty much grind them out. Everybody mm -hmm. will do this this way. This is the way the system works. And you know, the guy is tr was saying what I think is basic truth mm -hmm. in education. Yes. We have the means to tailor and individualize everything today. You call up the Ford Motor Company, you order a car, you want a convertible, red, you want this, that, and the other thing. They'll tailor it. And yet education, everybody must do this, everybody mm -hmm. must take this. These are the rules. We made the rules. And they sit there and they smile at you and they're very nice to you. And you say, gee, these are big-time educators. We're paying these guys lots of big bucks. And when you get down to it, they don't listen to us. Mm -hmm. They listen to their own little small group of experts, and then they give us this program and that program, as, and we don't have any input. That's right. We need to start taking that input. That's partly our fault because we continue to accept this type of thing. There are a lot of people now that are beginning to fight, especially here in Michigan. There's a lot of people trying to homeschool their children. Mm -hmm. Of course, they aren't allowed to do that unless they're certified teachers, oh, but they're yeah. taking the yep. issue to the courts. And it's very interesting. The court never considers is the child learning. It only considers is the 
parent certified to teach. Yes. And so we, we can see... Is the system and the bureaucracy alive and well? Mm -hmm. That's, That's exactly right. what's going That's on. That's right. And so if we want to change the system, we have to get up and speak our piece. One way is to vote for people that support choice in education. Mm -hmm. That is one way. Well, you know, my union won't like you. Well, may, they'll be very uptight, except privately you talk to a lot of teachers and they understand that. Well, that's right. It's in good fact, for I, I think the great thing is in, in Detroit, somebody once showed me a survey that a great percentage of the Detroit teachers of all ethnic and racial backgrounds are sending their kids to private schools. That's exactly right. And we see that going on in Dearborn now, more mm -hmm. and more, mm -hmm. as people say, no, I want to send my kid to a school where I know this is going to go down where I know I have some input because when That's you're right. giving them that check down there, mm -hmm. they're going to listen to what you have to say. When they just That's get correct. the money from the state and say, well, we have so many bodies, we get X number of dollars. Well, this, is our, this is our program. This is our plan. This is our policy. I get so fed up with their policy in the Dearborn Public Schools, it makes me want to vomit sometimes. Mm -hmm. And yet everybody smiles at you and they're all very nice people. Mm -hmm. But twice as many Twice as many public school teachers send their children to private school as individual citizens. Twice as many. So they, those who know the score in the public schools won't send their own children there. That oh, sure. speaks volumes. I had four teachers come to me this year, and when we talked to them, I said, how's it going? They said, fine. I said, how's it going with you? You're fine. What are you up to? Nothing. I'm just going to wait my time out. What do you mean? I want to get out. Mm -hmm. They want to get out. They want to get out for a multiple of reasons. Some of them are tired as teachers. Why can't we have more say? They always give us lip service. We'll listen to you. They have you go off on this plan and that plan, and then they do damn well what they want. That's right. Well, that's why choice is so good for teachers, too, because a teacher who wants to teach in today's system can't. They spend most of their time disciplining kids and trying to teach children things that they're not ready to learn. Whereas oh, if they're a the choice system... the teachers don't even teach in the subject field that they're trained in. Exactly. So if, if this was a system of choice, those teachers could go where they could teach the best and mm -hmm. teach the type of children they wanted to teach and really flower in their teaching ability. If we had the electronic capability, for example, for children to sit at a computer and learn the rote types of reading mm -hmm. and writing things, then the teachers would have more time to spend discussing how to write essay questions and how to write creatively and do mm -hmm. the things that we really hire the teachers to do. And today, they have hardly time for that at all. Well, the other thing is they really don't give us much judgment because everything is planned out mm -hmm. uh, from the State Board of Education. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, we'll do this and we'll That's do that. Right. The classic example is Lonnie Pollack up in Ann Arbor. She said you can't paddle kids. I don't believe you go paddling kids indiscriminately. But you know, for a certain type of kid, one crack, a little crack on the fanny will do more than anything in the world to say, you don't do this, you don't do that. Yet now, nobody can ever paddle. So you have kids laughing at you, they don't care, they can do about what they want, and we suspend them. That's punishment. We let them out of school, the kids <laughs> are in trouble. We suspend them. Talk about logic. And mm -hmm. then let's talk about our emphasis, uh, you know, where we emphasize. You all know the old story in history and the the idea that you judge a society by the buildings it builds, right? Mm -hmm. Middle Ages, that were churches and castles. That's where the emphasis. During the Industrial Age here in Dearborn, the factory. Now today, with the Information Age, we have the telephone companies and the business offices. Go to any public school today, and what's the biggest building? Not the library, the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, find out what rooms are air-conditioned. It's the offices. That tells you all you have to know about education. If you haven't figured that out, where the emphasis is, mm -hmm. it's the running of the schools that's important, not the education anymore. Check to see where they're air-conditioned in any school, <laughs> and I guarantee you'll find the offices are air-conditioned. When are people going to wake up to that? You're supposed to be out there yelling about this. I shouldn't have to sit here. <laughs> well, that's I'm what I'm doing. I'm going to vote for you. I told you that already. It's <laughs> all cut and dry. Mm -hmm. Libertarian Party. Mm -hmm. Mary J. Ruick. Mm -hmm. You want to tell me something else I don't know? Well, I'm I... such an opinionated. You, know, <laughs> you want to say something to me, you can go ahead and tell Well, I'd like to tell you a little bit why I'm running as a libertarian. I wish you would. Because, you know, libertarians on principle believe in choice. They believe in choice everywhere, not just in education. Libertarians believe that we should get back to what made our country great, which was freedom of choice in every sector. We don't believe in initiating force or fraud against our neighbor, and that's why I'm running on the libertarian ticket, because 
when when you vote libertarian you know what you're getting when you vote republican and democrat they'll say one thing and then do another just as you're talking about the uh, administrators who come and say oh yes we we will give you some say uh, teachers we will give you some say parents and then of course you find out what happens they don't do it because of course they're not running on principle and there's no other there's nothing finally down the line these guys start these new programs we got a new one called strategic studies the state has mandated it by the way three years from now there may be a new state board of uh, director of education there may be a new superintendent and nobody is ever accountable and mm -hmm. we spend more money on education than they've ever spent and the product is going down i'll vote for you mary j ruart give her a vote she's an interesting person in fact i wish you could hang around i'd really let you do the talking but you hit me where i live I care about education and I care about kids. That's great. Vote for Russ Gibb. I'll be back. Alan Dorfman has laser.